Their strength combined, the Lyrians and Dwarves managed to defeat the Scoia'tael. The guerrillas had weakened the last span of the bridge, turning the crossing into a deadly trap. Had Xavier, who noticed the weakened structure at the last instant not called out, all would have fallen into the chasm. The Lyrians managed to capture the unit commander. She stood, her head raised high, and when Meave glared at her, she did not avert her eyes. What is your name, Elf? Abayeth met a past one. She said, uh... Thank you, Reynard. I know well what she said. Kiss my ass. Is that truly the best you can muster? I'd rather show you exactly what I can muster. Tell them to unbind me. You got your opportunity. On the battlefield. Will you not tell me what they call you? Fine. It's all the same to me. I'm more interested to know how you came to be here. Who sent you? No one. It was my decision to kill you, and thus avenge Eldane. Do you remember him? The elf whom you denied a burial? Whom you left in an open field to rot? You've elven blood on your hands. The blood of the elves of the Mulderwood. Eldane was a criminal. He got what he deserved. You call him a criminal? What do you call humans who murder our kind in pogroms? Who massacre us? What do you call Black Rayla who fought at your side? Do not dare compare us. Do not dare! Enough. I've heard all I wish to hear. But I have Did you fall in your heed, Elf, eh? If you want to fight humans, go on and do it. You cannot talk sense to Egypts and lay here, damn it. Mahakam is and will be neutral. You cannot be neutral. To Dwan, you are either their foe or their dog. Mahakam has stood aside sleeping long enough. That is why we struck it in its very heart, as a call to battle. A call to brethren whom you, Elder, have kept from the world too long. I have kept him away. I've been bloody right to do so. You want to play at war, you numpties? You want to force the Pontar to flow upstream? Gang right ahead! Good riddance, I say! Go and kill, go and die if you fancy! But God damn it, leave us alone! Yeah, I should kill you! With my own hands! I should cut your throat, put you out of your misery! That's what you want, in it? To die? To die a stupid death? Well, I'll not grant you that. Nay, nay, I'll lock you in a tower. Sit there three centuries, and you just might grow a brain. Bruva Hoog gazed after the shackled elf as she was led away. Neve expected him to continue fuming, cursing her. But the dwarf stood silent. And his old eyes, half concealed by brows bushy as a forest floor, showed not anger, but the deepest sadness. Dwarven engineers made quick work of repairing the crumbled bridge span. <laughs> Want it, though? Look, Mount Carbon. Damn, and I thought Novograd was big.
So the elves are against us. Against our elder. Treacherous hounds. Truth be told, I supported the Squire Telephone. No, I wish every last one of them dead. Dead? Long-eared bastards. Raising our own saplings against us in the rebellion. Sowing unrest. Violence! In the mountains! Truth be told, I suppose. The Lyrians stepped inside Mount Carbon's bowels. Meave rode while looking upwards, admiring the intricately carved ceiling, gilded walls, monumental bas-reliefs carved from basalt. Yet this was no time to admire the sights. Ruva Hoog had summoned her to speak. I thank you for your invitation, Elder. My invitation? Choice term, lass. You wangled your way in here. Long I've lived. But ne'er have I seen a wench so stubborn. With all due respect, do you not feel like a pot conversing with a kettle? Ha! <laughs> True enough. Changes of mind didn't come easy to me. But they do come at times. Human wars concern me not at all. For so many they are, who could count them? Near a year goes by without one wanking king invading another's realm. A dog with scabies is less restless. That's why this morning I aim to send you off with nothing. Matter not what the clans were saying. Revia, Shmivia, who gives a sheep's fart? But that was this morn, before that daft wench and her pups attacked. Nilfgaard supports the Scoyotel, it's common knowledge. Nilfgaard uses them. Well, I'm nay worse, and I choose to use Queen Meave. So what use would you make of me, if I might ask? You've a plan? Aye, the kind dwarves like best. Simple, but sneaky. Like to give Nilfgaard a warning, you can. If you're going to rile my dwarves, throw them into the Scoyotel ranks. You'll regret it, eh? But I'd like to issue the warning without declaring war. All clear to you so far. So, when you march out of Mahakam, you'll find a company of our foot dwarves waiting out with the gate. Officially, volunteers enlisting with you against my will. And you have to put them at the fore. Next time you face Nilfgaard, want the black lads to break their teeth on our bucklers, get a taste of our axe blades. After that, dare say they'll think twice before they send more Scoyotel into these hells. I do not. Thank you, Elder. You restore my hope that I shall have my home back in the end. Faith can move mountains, aye, but it cannot do much about borders. I've watched you close, and must admit you're a plucky lass. That enough for Nilfgaard? Can I be sure? We will see. We shall know soon. I would like to march at once. So by your leave? Nay, <laughs> not granted. At once? What's that mean? Our laws are clear. Guests are to be sent off with a thundering feast. Even the humans. Bruva, as was Bruva's wont, insisted. So the Queen accepted the invitation, but as was her wont, set a condition. The feast was to last but one night, and not, as was the wont of local custom, an entire week. All clans were to be represented at the feast, save one, of course, the Zigrins. For they had already learned their punishment. The entire clan was banished from Mahakam. An exception was made for one of their number, for Gabor, who was beheaded before the day was done. 
When the sun had retired behind the peaks, the underground city came alive with the sound of bugles, bagpipes and horns. The dwarves emerged out into the central square and danced exuberantly, sparks kicking up from their hobnail boots. The usually crabby elder-in-chief Hoog proved a cordial host that evening. Let's drink! Lest our neck shafts grow cobwebs! Suddenly a messenger arrived. Bruva lifted his copper horn to his ear and listened with furrowed brow. What's that? Speak up! When she saw a sour grin on his face, Meave knew the tidings were not good. Yet she did not suspect they pertained to her directly. Meave, you expecting anyone? How's that? Runner says a delegation's arrived at Carmen. Freluria and Revia got a Nilfgaardian escort. How dare they? Traitors. Who leads it? Uh, you'd best sit. Who leads the delegation? It's your son. Willem, I fear. Willem? Markham remains neutral as regards all your squabbles. I trust I needn't remind you. So I'll have no scrambling nor shoving, and certainly no bloodshed. Point of fact, I'd prefer it if you... I wish to speak to him. I'd forbid you, but, as I said, never seen a more stubborn wench. All righty then, jabber away with him. Just remember, hands to yourself. Meave spotted banners, a Lyrian eagle upon one surrounded by Nilfgaard's black rags. Her hands became fists, showing how helpless she felt. Then her son and rival, Willem, emerged from behind a row of Imperial footmen. My, my. I should apologize. It seems I missed the coronation. Congratulations, my son. Who was it who placed the crown? General Epdahi? Count Caldwell. Ah, yes. Our elder statesman. Why have you come here, of all places? To acquire arms for Nilfgaard? As my official mission, yes. Yet unofficially, I wish to speak with you. I trust you've had tidings from the field. Edern turned to ash and dust. Vizimir murdered Redania in chaos. Faltus forced to strike a pact by his vassals betrayed. Hensult the same. This limerick, will it come to a point? Why, yes. To the same as this war. Mother, I beg you, you must see it. N Nilfgaard's victory is inevitable. Surrender now, and I shall show you mercy. For later... Later, it'll be too late. There will be no later. We shall repel them, drive them south at the points of our pikes. This we, Mother, who precisely do you mean? You stand alone. An impression many might have indeed. Yet I've allies. Those long loyal and those new. Where, Mother? In Zeracania? For here, in the north, why? There are none. The fight is done. Your friends from Nilfgaard will learn that is simply not true. When their ignorance bites them in the arse. So you aim to persist? Whatever for? For our freedom. For independence. Curious. I could have sworn it was for your ambition. To soothe your wounded pride. When I was crowned, a fact you deride, though that makes it no less true, I swore the good of my subjects would guide me. And a war we are doomed to lose cannot in any way benefit them. And slavery can. You know well the Blacklads put peasants in chains. Like cattle. Reprehensible, I agree, but... And resettlement? Forced labour? Cruel laws that make death the punishment for the slightest offences? Are those benefits? Well, answer me! I see I will not sway you, Mother. A shame, though I take comfort in the fact I tried. And now, a Jew. Oh, no. I, not you, will decide when this conversation is over. Oh, have we anything else to discuss? Are you perhaps aware that the Nilfgaardians tried to kill me? What? No, I... I... I heard only about an avalanche. Which tumbled down through no small effort of an Imperial envoy. Never would I... I believe you. I'm heartened that, despite all we... I believe you because I believe the Nilfgaardians wouldn't ever have asked your opinion. Think on it, Song. Are you their ally or their tool? Can you ever be sure? I am the King of Lyria and Rivia. 
To serve my subjects' best interests, I am prepared to make even the most painful concessions. Might I leave now? Or is there more? Naturally. How did you know you would find me here? I... I received Nilfgaardian reports to the effect that you've been seen in the past. Oh, roses are red and so are your cheeks, my son, as ever when you're caught in a lie. Lyria is two weeks' travel hence. Had you received word only once I was here, we'd have been long gone from Mahakam by the time you assembled a force and completed the march. No. You were forewarned of our intended route. It means I've a traitor in my ranks. Another one. Get out of my sight, Vinny. And pray we only ever face one another on neutral ground. Meave struggled inside not to turn and gaze once more at her son. He'd changed since they'd last faced each other, grown manlier, and he wore the crown well. The Queen returned to the banquet hall. Her advisers shot her questioning glances, curious what she had discussed with Bruva. But Meave decided to keep the details to herself. One of them wore a Nilfgaardian lead around his neck. Until she knew who, she would have to remain vigilant. Feasting's done, Reynard. We must consider our next move. I've thought on it, Your Grace. We've strength enough to hit the foe, but still not the numbers to face him in open battle. So what do you propose? This war we cannot win alone, nor even with the dwarves at our side. But if we secure a victory, small yet symbolic, we shall show the other realms of the North all is not yet lost. Thus, I propose we attack behind the front lines. Somewhere well clear of any major Imperial force. Where would you suggest? I'm considering Angren. To begin with, a thickly wooded marshy land, always helpful in clandestine operations. Secondly, the land strategically important, as it's the chief source of building material for Nilfgaard's fleets. All too little, I fear. Since we require a victory that would be symbolic, we must strike where it shall hurt, and Angren... Just recently welcomed a new regent, in the person of Count Coldwell, my third argument. Naturally, if your majesty wishes, I'm prepared to present alternatives to this. No need. We march at dawn. Meave had toiled, cajoled, persuaded, and gained the dwarves' support. She left Mahakam strengthened, markedly. Even so, the queen was in a foul mood. For it was clear a traitor, a viper, nested among the Lyrians. Someone who had conveyed the queen's plans to her foe. From this moment on, Meave would need to weigh every word she uttered, even in the presence of her closest associates. Your Grace, we must plot our course forward. Shall we take the Western Passage into Angren, or...? Not now. When, then? Dawn approaches, yet we know nothing of where... I will not repeat myself. The Queen knew she would learn the traitor's identity in the end. If need be, she would tear the name from the throat of another turncoat, Count Caldwell. Meave drooled at the prospect of seeing Caldwell in chains, then passing him to the hangman. Saddle the horses. I shall take the fall. The time for diplomacy, for preparations and negotiations had gone. Meave was to attack her foe at last, and she could not wait to do so. At long last, Meave's force reached Angren's marshy woods. Ever been? No? Count yourselves lucky. Are you certain we haven't lost our way? Alas, here there is no way. We continue south, that's all. South meaning the bottom. Should you ever venture there, I offer you this advice. Do your utmost to make no noise. <laughs> Poor soul. His comrades cried out, reached out. But alas... Amidst frothing waters, they heard bones cracking, the moan of metal bent and crushed. What the bloody hell, what was that? Rather not know, personally. 
Hold your positions. Arms at the ready. It was a glusty war. One of many the Lyrians would encounter along their path. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. At last, Meave and her force stood upon the Yaruga's bank. To find and punish the traitor Caldwell, they would have to cross the river. Yet the sole bridge nearby was in Nilfgaard's hands. Your Majesty, some new reports require your attention. Yes? To see Scoyatel in Mahakam, I was quite surprised. To see them attack their own. Their own? Ha! <laughs> they hate humans, sure. But those non-humans who won't join in their struggle, they hate far more. Collaborators, they call them. Traitors to their races. Murder them in cold blood to make others join out of fear. Only way to replenish their ranks, truth be told. I'm led to think we may owe the Scoyatel more compassion. Seems so many enlisted under duress that... Oh, madam, truly? And how would you tell those from the others, who grasp their weapons willingly, those whose hearts have turned black from sheer hatred? I know not for certain, but to question them might be a start. Ha! <laughs> and what? Think you'd hear the truth from them? From elves? No. Exceptions are a clear road to human blood spilt. All Scoyatel must die. Leave the gods to sort the wheat from the chaff. I see. Let's change the subject, shall we? I must go... Yes, my lady. I haven't had the opportunity to thank you. Had you not been so alert, we'd have fallen to our deaths in Mahakam. I merely did my duty, Your Majesty. <laughs> Modest as ever. Yet once the war is over, I shall make certain you're properly rewarded. My lady, the one reward I desire is victory. Your victory. Other matters away. As you wish, my. Hey ho, how's my favorite queen in the north? Ever have regrets? Feel remorse? For what? Oh, I don't know. Killing innocents, perhaps? Murdering travelers, pilgrims? I've always warned them. Won't touch a hair on your heads, provided you don't resist. So, see, gave them a choice. Besides, innocents? Please, Meave. We both know those to be mythical creatures. Everyone's got something on their conscience. So there's always call for murder? That's right. Dead right. You need but answer it. It's time I... Yes, Your Grace? Reynard, you fought in the first war against Nilfgaard, did you not? Yes, Your Grace. Though, as a mere captain then. Were they equally cruel? 
Did they scorch fields, turn peasants into slaves? Nay, no, Your Grace. They fought with honor in those days. So, what's happened? Why the change? It's said Emperor Emir Va Emrys's heart hardened over the years. He's grown crueler, more ruthless. His soldiers' zeal for violence has followed suit. But you don't say that. No, Your Grace. To your mind, why do they now despise us as they war against us? It is ever easier to loathe those you know. Before the first war, they knew nothing about us. Then they saw they had the better weapons, larger cities, superior craft. But in our towns, waste flowed through the streets in open gutters. And they concluded we weren't their equals. It's far easier to kill when one holds such a belief. It's time I...